Knowledge is power, and this is Powerful Stuff. Wellness Education Cannabis Advocates of Nevada present the Weekend 702 Nevada Cannabis News Hour with your host, Jen Solis. For the next 60 minutes, we'll take an in-depth look at the cannabis reform revolution sweeping the nation. The phone lines are open at 731-1230. That's 731-1230 or toll-free. Toll-free. 1-866-820-55. That's 1-866-820-KLAV. Now, let's bring on the host. Here is Jen Solis. Happy Veterans Day, everybody. Um, uh, this is Jennifer Solis. And to my right is Kurt Dukach, Raymond Fletcher, and Perry Haichu. He's going to give us the Alaska report today. Um, behind the scenes. Yeah, and the behind-the-scenes Alaska report today. Um, so, happy Veterans Day. And for those veterans who are suffering from PTSD, Nevada will take care of you with a medical cannabis card. Um, PTD, PS, PTSD is a qualifying condition here in Nevada. And we can, we'll help you get a card if you're a veteran, um, of course, um, on a fixed income or you can't have catastrophic medical bills so now i've had a couple of questions from veterans who are interested in getting on the local medical marijuana program and they're concerned about losing their va benefits as a result of getting their medical marijuana cards do we have any specific information for them concerning that actually i do in 2011 the uh, veterans administration of the united states so the whole or, or unifying organization said that if a veteran lives in a medical cannabis state and has a medical cannabis card that they are not going to be punished for using cannabis um by the VA administration. They are not going to lose their benefits. And uh, of course, they are not going to be considered testing dirty if they, if they you know, have cannabis in their system um, as part of a pain management. Um, but it's, well, Beach says it's one of those don't ask, don't tell things. But I encourage everybody to tell your doctor, your practitioner, all the medications that you're on. Because if cannabis is helping you, I want more than antidotal evidence. I want doctors to be able to say, yes, cannabis did help my patient. Um, Absolutely. You know, as much as they can say anything. Okay. Plus it helps prove it to the doctors. Yeah, it does help prove it to the doctors of over and over and over again. They're hearing this is helping with this. This is what I'm taking. Um, so be honest with your medical practitioner. Um, and happy Veterans Day, Day to all those veterans out there. Thank you for serving. Yeah, thank you, yes, for, your thank you for your service. All right. Um, the Clark County is now accepting applications from Republicans to fill the state Senate seat that's left, Mark, uh, left vacant by Mark Hutchinson. The post-election fallout. The post-election fallout. Man. Um, Mark Hutchinson was elected lieutenant governor over Lucy Flores. And we'd like to thank Mark um, for being a sponsor of SB 374 in this last legislative session that did pass. Uh, even though Lucy Flores is pro-cannabis also, Mark actually put his money where his mouth uh, was. And now... Now he's lieutenant governor. At potential great risk to his own political career, he kind of stuck his neck out there considering he really knew he was going for a higher office, you know, for a uh, conservative Mormon candidate like himself to really take such an aggressive stance on the grounds of constitutionality is really, I mean, what more can we really ask out of our elected officials than to just respect the constitution and the will of the people? I mean, that's, I mean, that's why he got my vote. Simple as that. Well, he also stuck his neck out there against his own beliefs. I mean, he says himself that he doesn't really believe in it, but that's what the people had voted for. So absolutely. Well, the people yeah, voted can... for it. So, yeah. you know, they you serve at the pleasure of your constituents. If this is what your constituents voted for, then you should push it regardless of what your beliefs are. Absolutely. You serve at the pleasure of your constituents. So any of you Republicans out there that are pro-cannabis, that's my own caveat right there. Um, there is Senate District 6 seat open for one of those Republicans, and you can, um, you can register for this by 5 p.m. December 5th. 
So there's an empty Republican seat that needs to be filled. And please please be pro-cannabis. That's my own little... Speaking of Republican seats filled, uh, oh. our, our favorite Assemblywoman, Miss Michelle Fiore in Assembly District 4 was re-elected. And she was the only Republican vote in the Assembly that helped to get the, vote, the bill uh, passed. You know, if it wasn't for her, basically, and Peggy Pierce coming off of her deathbed to vote yes, I mean, that bill would not have happened. So we have to give a big shout out to Michelle also. Who Absolutely. Who is also the new chairman of the taxation subcommittee. She was just elected as that chairman, so I have to congratulations, take my hat off Michelle. To her for that. Congratulations, Michelle. She, you know, it was um, she got kind of alienated by her own party at the last legislative session because uh, she was pro cannabis, and so uh, I'm <laughs> proud of her for taking a stand and sticking to her guns because we know how Michelle loves her guns. <laughs> well, she's she's always kind of marched to the beat of her own drum, no doubt. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> right on, right on. So. Um, you know, isn't there something about all, a bunch of Republicans getting elected up in Reno? I think you have the story about that. That's the new Reno City Council. The new Re Reno City Council is like all red. Where'd that money come from? Uh, I don't know, uh, but voters in Reno wanted uh, to take the city in a new direction, and they certainly did with the new city council. Their mayor, uh, she was serving as an at-large, and I believe she was also on the subcommittee with you, Hillary Sheevy. Is that her name? No. No? No. Oh. The, the, there was only a couple of women. Oh, maybe she was, actually. Yeah, she was a little I, I blonde. Remember, I, yeah. I think I only saw her once. Yeah, she was on that subcommittee. Well, she's now the mayor of uh, New Reno, or, yeah, Reno City. So Fantastic. wow! So th that whole flip flopped. It's it's like a sea of red happened to to uh, Nevada, <laughs> all over the country. All over the country. Well, definitely. yeah, definitely. I'm I'm still in denial. Oh, <laughs> so Raymond is I think chair. What are you of the Democratic Party here I, in Clark County? I am a member of the Nevada State Central Committee, and I'll be one of the people picking uh, the Democratic nominee for president. Okay. Please don't mess up. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm just asking my whole party not to mess up, please. Not just you. Um, okay, so we were talking about that. Oh, you know what? Oh, here's some dirt, and here it comes. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Planning Commission. We thought that stuff was just too crazy, didn't we? Well, you know what? As it turns out, one of the members of the Planning Commission... One of the members of the Planning Commission actually owns property and is landlord to properties of people that got dispensary licenses granted. So, so. You're, so, so. so you're telling me that the person who's responsible for issuing the planning permits is a landlord to the very businesses he's issuing the permits to? Yes, so yes, yes. So is that not like, are there conflict of interest laws in Nevada that prohibit uh, well, is it an elected official or appointed official, or is it just they're a job? Appointed. appointed. They're appointed. They're appointed. Okay, so are there conflict of interest laws for these appointed officials, or can they just kind of like skate by this, or is this just business as usual, and this guy just happened to have gotten caught for it? Right? I say it's business as usual. This happens all the time. There's nothing to see here. Move on. Go on. You know what? Don't say that. That and, and you know, and that's how the buck gets passed. Guess what? It happens all the time. Just roll over and enjoy it. Okay, Nevada. Well, how right. did the story come to, to come out in the first place? I can't imagine that the people who had the dispensaries or the production facilities that the land was on were were barking about this. I'm sure they were happy. Well, what, you what know happened? what? Just just like every other broadcast that you hear on Nevada Cannabis News, why don't you read tomorrow about it? <laughs> no, no doubt, fair enough. <laughs> you guys can read tomorrow about it in uh, in you know one of the one of the local papers here, the RJ or. Somebody's going to report on this very issue, and we'll say, guess what? We reported it first on Nevada Cannabis News. Well, the question News. now is what happens now? Do these licenses for these uh, these restricted licenses put get put on hold? Or? Well, they get they, put into jeopardy. They get they, called into question. I mean, how many of those properties does this dude or this individual own? Four properties. I know of those four licenses were granted. Of those, how many were denied? Four. And look. And, and no, and none were denied, and two of them are dispensaries. 
at least. And oh. so those were the ones that were the coveted ones. And well, those who were got, the ones that well got, what do you mean the coveted ones? You mean they have licenses from the state and the county? They have, or the city? I'm, I'm they not... have the, the licenses from the city. The planning got, yeah, got planning commission approval. And I'm not really sure. I, I need to investigate just mm -hmm. a little bit more on the And If they got city uh, state approval also, then it's just like, oh well, my gosh. Then that could probably already be it. I mean, the cards could already be on the table, basically, if they already have approval from both. I mean, well, that's not true. They have to go back to the city for a final quote approval correct yeah. correct and and there are ones that the city the state. and the county rejected but the state approved exactly. like i said was going to happen from day one well uh, we all kind a lot of, of knew people that. saw this coming yeah. a lot of people saw this coming but the, the thing is is that i was told before this process ever started exactly how it would work and about the commissioners would get couple from each of their district it was not going to be based on application it was not going to be based on merit like the state wanted it was not going to be placed based on anything else but then where they were in that um, commissioner's district or that city council person's district and who owned them and this is what it's washing out to be so you know this this corruption of las vegas you're right Go along. There's nothing else to see here. Da da da. But you know the thing is, is that if I was told before this process ever started exactly how this process would go, even though the state said we're going to do X Y Z, and the the city council and the county commission only get to say whether the pro, uh, whether the land use is approved or not. Mm -hmm. That's all they get to say, and then it was, and then it's a merit based process only, and then somebody tells me way beforehand, oh no no no. No, no, no. That's not how it's going to happen. That shows you that not only is there corruption and business as usual, but that, that everybody knows it. And it's just waiting for lawsuits. Yeah, we all saw the 66 dispensaries being a potential problem. There's just not enough and there's too much competition. And, you know, how do I put this? I, I mean, we could say, oh, I wish this and I wish that, but I really wish that Nevada would have taken a more hands-off approach to this at first. Uh, I wish free market capitalism could dictate how many dispensaries were out there. You know, I don't want to say just let everyone open, but let the zoning laws reflect who can open and who can't. And if you, yeah. and if you do well for yourself, you will make money. And if you're terrible, you will go out of business and the cream will rise to the top. And you know, maybe that's silly looking back on it because, oh, you know, you can't just let people start, you know, selling dope willy nilly and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but, you know, uh, from what we, from the nightmare that we've had going through this, I can't see it have being any worse than what we have now. Well, I'm going to say, but the thing is, is that what they're setting themselves up for here is some type of an injunction to stop the whole process. Well, that's what Tick is terrified of. We can't I, have that. If we <laughs> That's what Tick says, that we can't have that. But I can grow just as long as I need to. Well, we, and you know what? we I promised the state money for the biennium. We promised them revenue from these dispensaries. They've we got $2.5 million gone into them already. From the That's application fees, fees alone. I know, I know, but we promised them, like, I don't want to say they've already budgeted the money, but politicians have a habit of budgeting money that isn't there yet because we have projected numbers that we've told them we're going to be there. If there is no money by the end of the session, that's not going to look good for us regardless. You it's know, not our fault. It's the county's fault. It's the county we commission's can, fault. They we jumped and the city council. And we city all council. play the Double blame game, but regardless, it's going to look bad for the new and emerging industry. Luckily, it's going to be in the hands of the people in 2016 thankfully but it's just it's just bad business i think i don't I, think i, I, I don't think full around. legalization or, or regulation is going to pass in 2016 if this process get held gets held up in an injunction it's not going to be good for us that's for sure well what i'm arguing and what i've long argued about this is that guess what I'll be fine because I'm still growing and my friends that, that need help, I'll teach you how to grow too right. because you know what? Teach a person to grow and they can freaking smoke for a lifetime. To take a horse to water, that kind of thing. Yeah, well, you know, you know, that's that's just, you know, I don't know, corruption, bull crap. Well, stuff. talking about wanting to legalize, <laughs> the group wanting to legalize marijuana here in Nevada has over the needed signatures with 170,000 signatures. Nevadans may soon be able to legally smoke marijuana according to a group pushing to legalize recreational use. They've collected enough signatures to put the issue on the ballot. The group, 
Coalition to Regulate Marijuana said they will turn in 170,000 signature to the Clark County's clerk's office on Wednesday the 12th. The group only needed 102,000 signatures to move forward. So they they needed 102 and they got 48,000 more than they needed? Uh, 68,000, but yes. Oh, okay, 68,000. And the signatures still need to be verified, right. but once they're verified, you know. Once Thank you, you for that, that clarification, many, Raymond. Once you get that many over, you know, that that it's not hard to clarify the signatures. I mean, there's there are a lot of bunk ones that are going to be thrown out, but mm -hmm. that much over is, is really good margin. Mm -hmm. I agree, good. definitely. So where does it go from there? Does it go to legislature and then it goes to in front of the... Uh, in front of the state of Nevada, the people of Nevada? It will go to the legislature. And actually, John Ralston, is his uh, topic question of the day on his Facebook page today is, do you think the Nevada legislature will legalize recreational cannabis in Nevada next year? And I didn't comment myself, but uh, I mean, if I had to guess from what I saw last time around, I would say, of course, no. You know, the Republicans will vote no on this, but then there's a lot of pushback. Some of my more libertarian friends are not so socially conservative uh, Republican friends believe that the legislature might take a serious look at this and maybe it's a tax that they can get behind. Maybe this is a changing of the guard. We don't know yet. We haven't seen what they're going to do. So there's only one way to find out is we just got to go up there and fight for our rights up in, uh, up in Carson City next year. You know, we're going to focus on what we have to focus on as our patients advocacy and we're going to let the chips fall where they may with that recreational bill. Well, you know, I'm going to be up there being some kind of legislative slave for somebody. And I'll be with helping us. with that issue as well. I just hope that y'all don't screw up our state. <clears throat> y'all, you guys. You we'll, guys, play we'll, nice. We'll, we'll do our best. <laughs> we know you Republicans typically screw up uh, public education, health care, and things like that. Okay, and yeah, to yeah, be yeah, fair, yeah. you know, it's done so well under the democratic process. So come on. I think if if anybody got together and actually worked a bipartisan, we'd get things done. But it seems like everybody's just politically. Well, speaking of education, if we can get these medical marijuana dispensaries open in a timely manner, we can start putting <laughs> some revenue into those school budgets for Christ's sake. Again with that. Again yeah. with that. Yeah, that's true. That is true. Because so that would be good. One good thing of, of getting this whole process moving for sure. Um. So again, we're looking at medical marijuana being a firing offense in Nevada. Not if you work at MGM Grand or Mirage, though. What? Oh, yes, I've heard that. that Hard Rock? Uh, certain, Another one. Certain companies are a little more lenient with your medical marijuana uh, recommendation than other companies. Like, if exactly. you go to a company like Boyd Gaming or something like that, they're going to say, you know, no way, we're not going to accept that. They're going to say, Pfft. Yeah, but if you go to MGM, they have what they call, I think, a chief medical officer who... Uh, and kind of who reviews these uh, incidents on a case by case basis and determines in his opinion whether you'll be a fit for the company or whatever and i haven't heard a lot of bad things about his or her uh MGM Grand and Mirage are, are really, uh, really good companies to work for. Uh, they have that M Life program. <laughs> <laughs> no comment Did, on that. Didn't uh, they get? Didn't, no, no, no. They got rejected. Yeah. They, they got rejected by the city because of prior business practices. Plus, they also didn't make it up in the rankings of the state. Uh, uh, yeah. They so, don't have a whole lot of anything to say. So stand Godzilla on at this went point. squash. Um, and oh what were we talking about oh yeah hard rock too <laughs> <laughs> i had a blonde moment the hard rock also Stoner is super moment. super liberal uh when it comes to employing cannabis patients all right so we're going on a break and when we come back we will have our 420 moment and we'll talk about news from the nation cannabis has been used as a healing medicine for over 5,000 years with no toxic side effects is it right for you the professionals at Dr. Reefer are here to help. Now accepting new patients, make an appointment today at 428-0000. Bring your medical records, or if you don't have them, their staff will work to document your qualifying condition with a 99% approval rate. If you have any of the following conditions, cancer, AIDS, muscle spasm diseases, severe nausea, severe pain, Crohn's disease, glaucoma, or PTSD, call Dr. Reefer today for your free consultation and their money back guarantee. If you don't qualify, you don't pay. Call 702-428-0000 to get your Nevada medical marijuana card today. The Von Dank Group offers turnkey solutions for all your cannabis needs, bringing transparency and responsibility to a young budding industry. 
helping patients by producing the cleanest, safest, and most potent medicines and infusibles possible. The Von Dank Group is a design, management, and consulting corporation with over 30 years of industry experience and knowledge of the dispensary, edibles, infusible kitchen, and large-scale cultivation of cannabis manufacturing facilities. Let the Von Dank Group help you grow your cannabis business from seed to green. www.vondank.com you're listening to the Nevada Cannabis News Hour, produced by We Can, the wellness education cannabis advocates of Nevada. We Can is a 501c3 nonprofit. If you're interested in sponsoring us, donating, or advertising on this radio show, please contact our advertising department at 702 218 5226 or Kurt, K U R T, at WeCan702.org. <laughs> oh, weekend's 420 moment uh celebrity honoree is anthony johnson and a new approach we're again uh th- this is the pro cannabis group that went forward to legalize cannabis in oregon making cannabis uh, making oregon the third state in the nation to pass similar measures after washington and colorado um anthony johnson in his victory speech said that we won tonight because of the hard work of Oregonian voters. It's policy whose time has come. Um, Oregon is really, really liberal when it comes to cannabis any, anyway, but Anthony Johnson is the executive director of Oregon Cannabis Industry Association. They're working to protect and improve the rules and regulations govern, governing uh, Oregon's cannabis industry, as well as the director of New Approach Oregon. They're working to end cannabis prohibition for all adults in 2014. He's also a member of Oregon's Health Advisory and Authority Rules Committee, and he helped draft the administrative rules governing Oregon's upcoming state licensed medical marijuana facilities. So he's a really big advocate. What else do we have to say about or uh, well, about you know uh, obviously Anthony? you know obviously Oregonians love their weed. I mean, this is the town that brought us Portlandia and a sports team called the Blazers. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. They blazed. <laughs> so in a sense, it's not surprising that voters in the state passed a ballot initiative Tuesday to allow the cultivation, possession, and sale of the drug. Well, and you know why? Big money. Big money. That's right. That's what's changed over the last... Anything else about Anthony? Well, more about the law in specific. I mean, uh, you know, Johnson, he, he really didn't want to say how many workers uh, work, were working on the campaign or, you know, how many voters he contacted or anything. Like, he's being kind of hush-hush about the details of the campaign, which is kind of funny that, because that, usually people are just like, oh, we got we are, you know, ready to spill the numbers, but he's kind of being tight-lipped about it. Um, what he did say is that, you know, the group's Facebook page had over 50,000 followers and dozens of photos that were promoting the initiative, you know, um, had a lot of volunteers, of course, obviously, yeah. you know, it was a grassroots effort and they seemed to do very well for themselves. They had to gear toward older people because they had a bad feeling that millennials would turn out in low numbers, which we are notorious for doing. So, uh, obviously yeah. their strategy worked. So, Mid-term you know, whatever election, he's doing, man. keep doing it. Exactly. Um, and we're going to talk more about Oregonian law later. Um, we have Mark, Brad, or Mark on the phone. Hello, Mark. Hey, hey. Hi, how are you? What would you like to talk about? I want to talk about you guys' job fair this Sunday. Oh, right on. Yeah. Well, we have a job fair this Sunday at the Clark County um, Public Library on Flamingo. It's at Flamingo and Maryland Parkway. And it's from 1.30 till 5. And what do you want to know about it? No, I was just calling to tell you guys that your shirts will be ready on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Mark. You're awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks and thank listening. you for uh, Prince by Saint and Shirts by Saints. No doubt. Much yeah, fun, like too. us up on Facebook. Yeah. Big shout out to Mark. Thank you, guys. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for calling in. So Oregon, you know, became... Back to Oregon, huh? Yeah, they became the third uh, state to legalize recreational marijuana, and they still they're gonna have to go through what Nevada just went through is uh, getting their regulations and their rules together. Um, the, what they have so far is adults may not have more than eight ounces of marijuana and four plants per household, and their plants and cannabis may not be visible from public property. Oh, so they can have so they can have greenhouses. Um, they just can't. They have to have big fences around them. Basically, and it creates an excise tax on all marijuana sold by marijuana producers. Flowers are taxed at thirty-five dollars per ounce. 
Oh, that that's pretty seems, good. That seems reasonable. Okay. And marijuana leaves are taxed at $10 per ounce. So basically, it's not only for um, marijuana legalization or cannabis legalization, but it's also for a ruderalis, which is the hemp plant, right? It's looking like it because the immature plants are taxed at $5 per plant. Hmm. Okay. You know, what it's going to be is 40% will go to the Common Core School Fund. 20% will go to mental health, alcohol, alcoholism, and drug services. 40% will go to Common Core? Yeah, Common School Fund, yes. Oh, Common School okay, Fund. I was yeah. just going to say, oh, okay. Okay, not Slush Fund. Or... <laughs> no, no, not Slush Fund. Sorry, this is in Clark County. Uh, 15% 15 will go to the state police. 20 will go to cities and counties. And then 5 will be transferred to Oregon Health Authority for alcohol and drug abuse prevention. Well, when the t law takes effect, adults 21 or older can possess up to eight ounces of marijuana and can grow no more than four plants in their household. Um, th these amounts are total limits for the household. So if you are, have a couple of different people in your house, you can still only grow four, four plants. plants. Yeah, But you can have eight, eight ounces. ounces. Per yeah. household, though, right? Not per per person it, uh, that changes yeah things. both amounts both amounts are eight ounces per household mm. and he's four just for me i didn't see if it was per person or household i guess I can and individual that. individuals that are 21 and older may also gift but not sell up to an ounce of marijuana or 16 ounces of marijuana products in solid form or 72 ounces of marijuana products in liquid form to other adults i gift you this marijuana perry I gladly accept this marijuana, Raymond. <laughs> you know, wait a second. This happens that that this happens all the time. You know what? Somebody at our last meeting, one of our last meetings, a patient gave me some cannabis, and I really didn't need it, but and I smelled it, and I was just like, oh, okay. I took some for myself, but I gave the majority to somebody else because I was just like, I really didn't need it, and there were patients at that meeting who did need it. Pay it forward. Pay it forward. That's right. I generally give at almost every meeting to somebody who needs it if I have any excess. So Just asking you shall receive. Exactly. <laughs> I true. have been a recipient many a time of that asking that I shall receive. And I've also, speaking of, you I've look also, like you've been receiving pretty for a lot today. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I had to put Raymond on blast. He came in smelling like he was, he was, you know what? I thought that's what he was, at, a bag of dank for his. He's wearing <laughs> cannabis for men. Cannabis for men. <laughs> hey, I, I just I feel comfortably mind. numb. But you know what? Uh, speaking Other, of comfortably numb, a new got, Pink Floyd album. Today I got a little. Terrible. I got a little oh. more news out of Oregon. Uh, I got to applaud the uh, Mulatawama County District Attorney Office. Office. The, the, uh, what? <laughs> the what major city? Mulatawama County District. Okay, that's Oregon's largest district attorney's office. Okay. And they announced on Monday that it that it will dismiss pending cases involving violation level marijuana possession Yay! in light of Measure 91's passage last week. Yay! That's, that's fantastic. Exactly. That's fantastic. Steve Volston <clears throat> needs to do something like that. He needs to just drop everything that's pending that that it would have been allowed that you know has been hung up in court. We're hoping that uh, that the Alaskans follow follow a similar similar role in that uh yeah. we're hoping that the alaska da does the same now they need to do something they released a statement to the press a mon uh, monday afternoon saying prosecutors will dismiss a total of 21 pending marijuana cases all involve marijuana related activities that will be legal when the no new law becomes effective july 1st 2015. you hear that steve that's, follow suit that's right even before the law becomes law they're, they're Only 21 this, so. cases are pending. That's yeah, funny. That's right. I, I didn't even, you know, you would think, oh, there would be hundreds of cases dismissed, but that really shows maybe law enforcement hasn't been so aggressively targeting it, rolling up to the ballot initiative. That's that's also good news. Well, I heard the, that ours wasn't either. They were doing the normal score and rodeo, big house grows, mm -hmm. um, but none of these delivery services have been taken down that I know of, but I don't use them. Preach on, <laughs> sister. They, they also, Have you guys heard about any delivery services here in town getting busted? No, not yet. There are rumors, but, but I we still don't. But we still don't have dispensaries open. So right. Um, but there, there's also besides the 21 cases, there's another 29 cases that involve warrants for marijuana-related crimes, including 23 violation-level possession offenses. So not only are they just dismissing the cases that you know involve marijuana, if you got 
pulled in on probation violation for marijuana use. They're letting you go. Oh, you hear that, Steve? I know a couple of people that have been pulled in on wow. on violations that, that they proved weren't violations, and now that they still yeah. got hung up now with that, this crap. I did not expect them to go that far with it, but that's... That's wonderful. That is wonderful. If you anybody know knows Steve, get you know, set, hook me up with a meeting with him, please. <laughs> it's but easy. Seriously. Call his office. I've I have. Steve. I tried to get him on the radio. Remember? Oh, I was going to say, I know. I, well, I tried well, to get him on here. He blew me off. Hold on. The election's over now. Yeah, the last two meetings that I've asked with for Steve Wolfson's office, they've given me, and I've had in a timely and prompt manner. Yeah, I called and emailed and put my request in writing. So yeah. Okay. Well, you you know what? We have a caller on the line. Lee. We have a couple of callers. We got a couple. Hey, Lee. Hey, Lee, what's Hello. up? Yeah, I just wanted to uh, also mention, besides the states that went ahead with legalizing, like uh, Oregon and uh, I guess Alaska, right? Uh, California also passed an uh, important bill uh, effectively decriminalizing uh, all these nonviolent um, Charges, money, like possession drug charges, charges, and yeah. they're letting a bunch of people out of jail. Because yeah, of Proposition should, uh, 47. Mention it. You yep. see, there's this push and pull in California right now. You have good news like this, but then I hear that there were all of these local municipalities that were rolling back patients' rights, adding more taxes, restricting access to dispensaries, and things like that. So there really needs to be some kind of conjoined effort to get some real state regulation at some point. Otherwise, it's just going to continue to fall apart. So they need a unifying state code for like all we have. medical marijuana, like we have, and then they can then the municipalities can kind of shove and 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 shove their own little things in from there. Nope. Oh, okay. Hello. All right. Well, we have another caller on the line. His name is Scott. Hey, Scott. Hey, Scott. How are Hi, you? Dick. I am awesome. How are you guys? Very well. Awesome. Great. What's going on, bud? Super. Hey, I just wanted to touch a little bit or uh, talk about. Um, the the patients actually selling their medicine or or gifting it just mm. uh, before we were talking about it, but you know you, you I kind of look at this like it's all brand new and I understand that we have to have all these these regulations, but I mean how many times has a person been in a bar or brought a twelve pack over to your house or you know you or something like that? I, I don't think it's going to be as strict in the future. I mean. What do you think? Definitely not. I think that the uh, the natural evolution of the industry will dictate that and that it will become more and more socially accepted. I mean, you know, as marijuana becomes more and more socially accepted, the mystique of trading and giving away weed to each other is going to go away. It's not going to be dangerous anymore, so people are going to take it more casually. I hear stories in Colorado that people are starting to give away joints at wedding receptions, just like they do champagne and things like that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, we're, breaking it, we're breaking down these walls one at a time, day by day. Well, I was going to say that's normal in my world, and I like to keep it that way. <laughs> um, well, when I bring, we bring cookies over to people's houses, or we bring cannabis, or we give oil away, or we do something, that's because we receive a lot and when i receive a lot i give a lot and you know it, you, give, you it just comes and goes it comes and goes and people were like people have been amazed where people just walk up and give me cannabis and and it's just like wow how did that happen i say a lot of good work paying it forward um being there in the community um giving to people and then they know that you give to people and other people know that you give to people in need and so then people give me cannabis and That's it's stoner, it stoner people karma know, it's stoner people karma know who you are you know people know who know who you are and they're giving it to you pay it forward i think once the dispensaries open up once you know we get that going about six months after that finally happens because it's going to be held up with injunctions and hearings and everything we'll see once that finally sure, well, thank you guys Thank so, you so yeah, Scott, you. if you're thinking about bringing cannabis over to my house, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Feel free to bring I, it on I, over. I got something silver and shiny that's really cool. I'll have to show you tonight. Okay, I'll talk to you later. All right, see ya. <laughs> I kind of had that an idea of that's who that was. Anyway, um, so Raymond and Perry, are you going to talk to us more about some election news from around the country? Well, like Scott was uh, mentioning, what is Scott, uh, Proposition 47? Oh, in, yeah. In California, it reduces felonies, but really wants, but all it really does is tax medical marijuana. It defelonizes many low level crimes, such as possession of personal amounts, and the proposition passed with 58% of the vote. 
At the city and county level, voters were voting to tax medical marijuana and keep or enact dispensary bans and medical grow restrictions. Voters in Blythe rejected the tax. In Santa Ana, they prohibited dispensary bans. And in Shasta County, they repealed medical grow restrictions. They repealed medical grow restrictions. Yeah. See, every, so there's a lot of little movement in these municipalities mm -hmm. and, and cities. And that's what it is. A lot of stuff going on in the little neighborhoods. And once, you know, this city, that neighborhood, that neighborhood get on board and move on forward, the county ends up turning into a green county. That part of the state turns into a green part of the state. And it helps economically. And as we saw with the uh, Oregon initiative, it's going to put money into public education where it's so desperately needed. Absolutely. That's then uh, DC passed their initiative 71 that was to legalize personal possession and cultivation. It passed with 54% uh, of the vote. Oh my God, these numbers that, that have, have passed in, in Oregon, they failed with 58%, but no, that's, they... that's in a minute. We'll talk about Florida. Yeah, making the Pacific Northwest the first legal region of the country and the first shared legalization border in the world fantastic right on well <laughs> there's trouble in paradise though raymond unfortunately <laughs> uh, colorado has legalized it on a state level but now a lot of these cities want to ban ban uh recreational marijuana shops oh Col manito springs yeah, man manito we couldn't springs, get nothing red cliff rejected uh rejected pot Pot shops, all other cities voting on bans accepted them, including the Denver suburb of Lakewood. The towns of Rama and Hot Sulphur Springs rejected pot taxes, and all other cities voting on taxes approved them. Vexingly, the towns of Palisade and Peonia voted to ban pot shops, but then tax them in case they ever do. Open. Whoa, 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 whoa. So you're going to ban something. They banned it. And, and then, then you're going to vote to take. What kind of nimwit? Where is that bass backwards place it's, at? It's somewhere in rural Colorado, I would assume. Uh, and now Michigan's <laughs> unbeaten streak. Somewhere where they have guns and well, big trucks. You know, Michigan had had like quite the uh, quite the track record of the municipalities approving our, oh, yeah. our policies. But you know, right their on. unbeaten streak has has come to a close, unfortunately. Cities in Michigan have gone 16 and 0 up until this election and passing charter amendments to decriminalize personal amounts of marijuana. Last night, Claire, Frankfurt, Harrison, Laper, and Onaway became the first to reject amendments, with Laper's rejection decided by only six votes. So when wow. people say, oh, you know, your vote doesn't matter, it's like if you and your buddies that you had a session with that night would have gone and voted, yeah, I you hope, probably would have I hope a group it. of you got, didn't get dabbed out and missed that one, huh? Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> uh, you know, these cities all have less than 2,000 uh -huh. votes. <laughs> yeah, while speaking of dabbed out. <laughs> while the six larger cities of Berkeley, Huntington Woods, Mount Pleasant, Pleasant Ridge, Port Huron, and Saginaw all support decriminalization. So, of course, the smaller towns have a little bit more pushback, more conservative and older population, most likely. You know, these things, I mean, it is what it is. Uh, New, New Mexico remains perfect on decriminalization, while Maine splits it. The two largest counties in New Mexico voted overwhelmingly to decriminalize marijuana with burden, with the, Albu we, uh, the excuse <laughs> me, with the county that encompasses Albuquerque voting 59.5% and Santa Fe voting a whopping 73.1% in favor. That's unbelievable. In Maine, South Portland joined neighboring Portland's legalization vote from a year ago, approving legalization of two point of two and a half ounces by 52 and a half percent vote, but smaller Lewiston rejecting legalization with only 45 percent in favor. Um, I mean, so we, lot. We, we tried to get Massachusetts's uh, numbers, but their uh, election website was having technical difficulties. We were unable to pull up the numbers, so we'll have those for you next week. Right and, on. Uh, of course it. it was having technical difficulties. <laughs> Uh, I got a little uh, news out of California, a little non-political news. Mm -hmm. um, what do you guys do on the weekend before uh, Thanksgiving? Because uh, in, in Humboldt, California, they're having the Humboldt High Grade Harvest Gala. It Ooh. promises a weekend of reggae, hip-hop, and cannabis. Wait a minute. Wait a second. Yeah. When, when is that weekend? It's the weekend before Thanksgiving. So now, like the 22nd? Two weeks before 20, November 21st dinner. and 22nd it is. Oh, so, I hate so road trip. Now that California's harvest season is dwindling down, it's time to enjoy the fruits of your labor. Yeah, so, so some of that must be cured says, somewhere. Spark up your, your top batch 
uh, of buds at the first ever Humboldt High Grade Harvest Gala this November. The weekend festival boasts an impressive lineup of reggae and hip hop artists such as Dilated uh, Peoples <laughs> and Alba Rose, as well as guest speakers that intend to spread, their, spread further education on cannabis. The Harvest Gala is trying to veer away from the standard cannabis cup format of festivals, making this event strictly BYOB, bring your own buds, with no sales of cannabis products on site. Think good. Think of it as a good old fashioned music festival that openly lets you blaze up. Well, I know Love where it. I'm going. <laughs> Either so. that or to Alaska. Now uh, we're going to go to Alaskan news with Perry, uh, our our Alaskan correspondent. Well, speaking of Alaska, this is a article from the Alaska Dispatch. Uh, the pro marijuana camp credits conservative votes with passing legalization. In the weeks leading up to Election Day, the fate of Ballot Measure 2, which would legalize marijuana in Alaska if approved by voters, seemed far from certain. So it was with great relief that pro-marijuana advocates watched the first results arrive Tuesday, showing the measure passing, and supporters believe they have tipped the balance in favor of legalization and uh, by using a less than traditional voting block, which is conservatives. You know, Taylor Bickford, who will be here, he's the spokesman for the campaign to regulate alcohol like marijuana. He will be okay. here at the NCIA conference on Thursday. If any of you people want to talk to any of these representatives from Alaska, there's an NCIA conference this Thursday at the Paris. Right on. Uh, Alaska still seemed like a question mark, despite predictions earlier in the year that made the past seem like a sure bet. Now, I had heard this when I went up there that everyone was talking big. Oh, we got this in the bag. And, you know, there, there's nothing to worry about. We were outspending them 12 to 1 and we're going to crush them. But, you know, as Election Day cr drew closer, I mean, it got really, really close. I mean, if you would have asked me, I would have guessed that we probably would have lost the ballot just because, you know, knowing Alaskans and, you know, the demographics and such, like you know, the young people not turning out and this, that. But I am just so overwhelmingly excited that they were able to pull out, you know, eke out this victory. Um, the campaign noted that ballot measure two was approved by more voters than any other winner in a statewide race. There wow. Were, there were 116,803 votes cast in favor of the measure, more than a thousand uh, excuse me, about a thousand more than went to rep uh, Representative Dong Young's reelection, and 6,600 more than U.S. Senate Dan Sullivan, who is leading over incumbent Senator Mark Begich. So more people voted for the ballot measure than voted for their senators. Wow. <laughs> um, you know, Bigford attributed to the win in part to the campaign's efforts to target conservative voters. Early support for the ballot measure seemed high, but appeared to dip as the election neared. Bickford said in a red state, quote unquote, with a high profile Senate race, getting those conservative votes was critical. He also noted that despite targeted efforts from the anti-legalization campaign in rural Alaska, that portion of the state generally favored the measure, with most Northwest, Northern and Interior Valley precincts voting for legalization. Conservative strongholds like the Matanuska Valley, where I went to high school, and the Kenai Peninsula generally voted against the issue, as did the liberal leaning Yukon Kuskokwim Delta. Wow. Now, that kind of upsets me a little bit because the Matanuska Valley is, uh, I mean, I can't say the name of the strain on the air, but it's known oh, as MTF. Is it, is it uh, Alaskan Thundercluck? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, a lot, I mean, that's kind of a... Uh, See, Lawrence just looked at me. Yeah. He's like, am I going to have to bleep you again? <laughs> it's, a it's a legendary strain, and, you know, I, I haven't seen it since I've been up there, but regardless... Um, a lot of people are interested in it, and I am really uh, hoping that the Matanuska Valley jumps back on that because they grow a lot of good medicine down there in Palmer, and I would really hate to see them ban that in these local municipalities where the farming, where these farming communities are. Yeah, Does for sure. ATF come in a wax? <laughs> It will All be right. if I get up there. You better believe it. All right, you guys, we're going to have more from Alaska uh, and Perry after the break. Green Spot Hydroponics is a Las Vegas-based distributor of specialty indoor and outdoor gardening supplies. Locally owned and operated with over 3,000 square feet of inventory. Expert and friendly staff to help you with all your growing and hydroponic needs. Our pricing and service will not be beat. We help you grow. 3355 Westlake Mead Boulevard, just behind the Texas station. Mention we can and receive 10% off. Call us at 702-463-6000. That's 702-463-6000. Finally, Nevada medical marijuana dispensaries are opening, but you must have your medical marijuana card to get inside. Call the friendly team at Karma Holistic Health Foundation, toll free, 855-420-1110, or visit GetMedicalMarijuanaNow.com. Karma Holistic Health Foundation will give you legal access to medical marijuana. All veterans receive a discount, 855-420-1110, or visit GetMedicalMarijuanaNow.com. 
You're listening to the Nevada Cannabis News Hour, produced by We Can, the wellness education cannabis advocates of Nevada. We Can is a 501c3 nonprofit. If you're interested in sponsoring us, donating, or advertising on this radio show, please contact our advertising department at 702-218-5226 or Kurt, K-U-R-T, at WeCan702.org. Hi, welcome back to Nevada Cannabis News. And we were just talking with Perry Haichu uh, about Alaska. I got a little bit of Alaska news. Well, yeah. wait a second. We're, we're no, I'm good. done. Go for it, Kurt. Oh. What do you got, man? What have uh, you got, Kurt? About you Alaska? remember Charlo Green? Oh, is that the lady sure who said pluck it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, yeah, the news reporter who quit on the air. Yeah, the effort lady on the that air. That was awesome. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, she's aiming to open a brick-and-mortar cannabis club in Anchorage before turning it into a seed-and-sale business. Now she she actually had this 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 business running up and running before she did that famous move on the air. She actually uh, I know they were doing a story on her cannabis club and she like realized it as as she was doing it that they were talking and she was talking about herself and she went <laughs> you know what <laughs> pluck you guys mm-hmm. or pluck it anyway and she actually decided to pull that stunt when she felt that the initiative was losing steam and uh, the tide was turning to vote against the initiative so they she felt it needed a you know a, a little, big push a push so that was her push to throw all of her cards into the table and try to get this passed. You know? What a way okay, to so be an activist. Was, my mm-hmm. question is on this, was she running this cannabis club illegally before this measure passed? No, 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 no. There are no cannabis clubs in Alaska. I think this is a pre-existing business that, she, that she's hoping to transfer that that specific property that's working as a different business now into a cannabis related business at some point. Ah. So she just kind of has it locked down and she's just like, look, this is where I'm at. This is what I want to do with this building. And this, you know, and but, then uh, you know, catch and flat. Well, it. a lot of people are like, oh, you know, that was terrible. But it's like they say, you know, there's no such thing as bad publicity. So that's right. Know, regardless of what people thought about it at the time, it just might have just might have worked. So, mm. so and she, if I rolled naked up the hair, it wouldn't be bad for our radio show. <laughs> I don't know if that's legal here in Nevada. You can go to San Francisco and do that. Well, you know, as long as you got the naughty bits covered. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. You could pixelate them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys. Um, well, you know, I was listening to you guys saying that these 58 and 61 percent um, margins were helping people pass, and even 52 percent. I thought you guys were yes. throwing out there. Well, you know the the, the um, Florida initiative, uh, amendment oh two narrowly failed in Florida. It actually 58% of the people voted for it. It just didn't pass. By we the... won, but we didn't win. The way Florida yeah. works is you have to have 60% of the vote to have a constitutional amendment changed. So oh. that was the story that they were pushing hard for the constitutional amendment and they they got burned 58 percent yeah they they like i said they won but they didn't win and it doesn't seem right but i think this is going to carry a lot of momentum into the next election cycle or even possibly into the legislature uh i mean i think that's the next uh move for round of attack for them yeah because you know if i'm sitting across from you and i'm an anti-marijuana advocate and you're a donor potentially you're a room full of donors and i'm trying to get you guys to donate money to this cause my pitch to you is now, well, guys, if you give me millions of dollars to fight this marijuana campaign, we're going to get 42% of the vote for you. You know, that's a hard sell. So when yeah. we, as advocates, well, push I those mean, numbers, they, yeah. these are great ways to recruit. You know, we're going to make, we're going to be able to get the money. We're going to, we're going to get it done. Well, I was going to say that, you know, it, it doesn't matter to people that fund anti-campaigns because it's usually just one, two, three, four people that are the anti-campaigns and like the Koch brothers. Uh, Nathan Adelson, um, who else? Oh, Sheldon Adelson, man. Oh, I, Sheldon I, Adelson, you see, not I, Nathan. I Hold have on. a, yeah, man, I don't know why he got involved in Florida specifically. I'm sure there's a backstory behind it and, you know, he has personal. He runs a drug treatment center I, here I, in I, town. I, I know he has a drug treatment center, but what I'm getting at is I'm very nervous to draw the attention of these large casino operators into this. As of now, the larger casino operators have kind of kept on the sidelines. They're not jumping in for us. They're not jumping in against us. So for some reason, Adelson didn't stick his nose in our business this time around. So I'm kind of hoping he will do more of the same because I don't think we're going to get him him for us. I'm just desperately trying to keep him, you know, keep him out of the ring. 
Yeah, <laughs> just keep them away from us. Yeah. But I was going to say, you know, that if Florida loses again, then you, you know, then it's like, like now you've treat now you've uh, trained people to vote against you, isn't it? Well, so if they lose see, yeah. again in a ballot initiative, it really can, can be dangerous yes. running a third time. Yes, and this is the problem in California. Like I was telling you about raising money. If I'm coming to you as a pro marijuana legalization campaigner now, and you're a donor, and I say, "Well, guys, we've lost twice, but this time's going to be different." I promise. Well, how's it going to be different? Well, we're running the same exact campaign we are the first two times. Well. You know, it's, yeah. it's hard to get people to donate over and over to losing campaigns. And California was the the bread, not the like the pioneer, you know, the number one, the first wave of all this started from them. And to see them getting left behind is uh, is regretful. So, you know, I would hope that they, you know, I it is regretful, get it together, but, but they need to get their state act together before they before they do anything else. They went from the bottom up. They did municipalities, cities. You know, then up the rope. And everybody knows you can't pee up a rope. <laughs> Apparently not. They've proven that. They've proven that. So. All right. Uh, so from Florida, we're going to go to New York uh, with a story. Raymond, are you uh, in the building? <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to figure the whole peeing up a rope thing. Uh, okay. <laughs> yes. Uh, a New York police department is going to stop arresting people for some marijuana offensive. Mayor de Blasso made a lot of promises in regard to marijuana enforcement when he was campaigning. Unfortunately, up to this point, uh, those promises have been nothing but rhetoric. That's according to Drug Policy Alliance. A new report released by the Marijuana Arrest Pro Research Project and a drug policy analysis shows that despite campaign promises, marijuana possession arrests under de Blasso are on track or equal or even surpass the number of arrests made under Bloomberg. Same old story. Yep, and, that, and that's the thing, you know, and Bloomberg was Republican. De Blasso's a, a Democrat, you know. Well, Bloomberg is an independent. He was a Republican, though. I know, before. I, I know. I'm, I'm turning out Just but, but himself. I mean, Distancing but, himself. <laughs> exactly. But I mean, th this is the thing. You you run for office. You give your word. You This is what I'm going to do. Then you get in there and you crap on the people that put you there. I mean, you should be able to recall your elected officials. They just don't respect us as a voting block because they don't think that people who smoke cannabis will turn out the vote. So they'll pitch us and say, oh, we're going to do this for you. But then really, are we going to be there for them? Are we really going to show up? At well, the polls, do they really care when it comes right down to it? Well, look at the last election. Those elections just passed. What? The That's lowest right. voter turnout since, what, 78? 78? I mean, but, come on. But we still won three out of our four major fights. So You're absolutely right. Uh, you know, so uh, the commissioner, the police commissioner, Bill Bratton, stated that New York Police Department will stop arresting some people for minor marijuana um, possessions. Uh, from ABC, uh, they say uh, many New Yorkers facing low-level marijuana charges will soon be issued summonses instead of being taken into preaching councils. Well, you know what drives me crazy about that? That whole stop and frisk thing, that whole stop and search thing where they're telling people to turn out their pockets. They're only telling people of color to turn out their pockets. If they go up on Wall Street and ask some of those guys to turn out their pockets, they'd find a lot of cocaine. <laughs> Lots of cocaine. You understand me? A lot of cocaine. But you know what? They ask people of color to turn out their pockets, and what do they have? Marijuana. So they used to arrest them. But it's like, if they would just do this in Wall Street, they would get people that would pay their tickets just to get well, out of it. Didn't Joe Biden's son just got busted for doing coke, got kicked out of the Navy for it or something? You know, it's like... Oh, and you know what yeah. happened to Mitch McConnell? No! Tell us. <laughs> <laughs> Mitch McConnell's wife wife's family got found with 90,000 pounds of cocaine on their ships. And these people, the Mitch McConnell's wife, their family has gave to his campaign oh, oh. for years and years and years, giving millions of dollars to his campaign. And then Mitch McConnell married her, and she happened to be like, what, 15, 16 years old or something from Columbia? Say what was your first so. clue? <laughs> what is the first clue? All right, our freaking... We're out of time. Me. Yeah, I know. Somehow. All right. So cor court support is needed. Teresa Deming's uh, preliminary hearing will be on Wednesday, November 12th at 930 at the Regional Justice Center. Department 8, Judge 
Zimmerman on the 8th floor at 200 Lewis Avenue. That's tomorrow morning. Be That's there. That's tomorrow morning. Be there and show your support, but don't show a lot of bling. And please don't go woo, 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 woo. And our job fair on Sunday at the library on Flamingo from one thirty. County Public Library. From one thirty to 5. Come out and... Come out and bring your resume. We also have court support um, on Thursday for Federica Ballard. She is in um, for minor possession. If you want to see it, look at our website.